Once again, you're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm your host, William Cooper. Are you one of the people who believe that everything that's happened through history is an accident? And that while one or two things may have been planned, that most of history had no intelligent direction forming it, driving it? Well, listen to this, folks. And listen very carefully. Those desiring substantial evidence of the unfoldment of the great plan should follow the suggestion inscribed upon the monument to Christopher Wren in St. Paul's Cathedral and gaze about them. The rapid advancement in the social and political states of man, the increasing richness of human living, and the broadening vision toward individual and collective responsibility herald with auroral colors the rising of the sun of truth. There is much yet to be accomplished, but already the achievement is impressive. Even the most devout humanist cannot survey the orderly progress of the race and at the same time deny the existence of a well-integrated program. The light of the ancient Vedas is slowly but surely illuminating the whole world. The vision of man's noble destiny and the sacred sciences which made possible the realization of that vision have been guarded and served by the silent ones of the earth, the priesthoods of the sacerdotal colleges, the hierophants of the mystery schools, and the adept masters of the secret societies have been the guardians of man's noblest purpose, the perfection of his own kind. It is the inalienable right of every honorable person to be grateful for the opportunities which progress bestows. And with this appreciation comes also an appropriate measure of resolution. The past proves the future, which is but the extension of good works toward their fullness. The mystery schools neither restrained nor limited the unfoldment of human institutions. Man fashioned his civilization according to his natural instincts and convictions. And this process must continue, for growth is not hastened by the interference of authority. Man substantiates with his mind and heart that which he fashions with his hands. The esoteric tradition ensouls the ordinary works, revealing the larger purposes through the smaller ones. Not so long ago, 90% of the population of the earth was in physical slavery. Having liberated his body, the audacious creature must now free his heart and mind. Thus, pressed on by sovereign necessity, the world conqueror becomes the self-conqueror. Under a democratic concept of living, the responsibilities for progress pass to the keeping of the people. The powers vested in the governing body, functioning with the consent of the governed, include not only provisions for collective security, but also the advancement of such religions, philosophers, arts, and sciences as contribute to the essential growth of human character. An administrative system which ignores ethics, culture, and morality cannot survive as a dominant political organism. Democratic institutions must accept the task for which they were fashioned and become the conscious custodians of the democratic destiny. Progress demands the most from those with the largest spheres of influence. Vast organizations, industrial, political, social, and educational, have been made possible by the modern life way. These have become the molders of public opinion, feared or respected according to the measure of integrity revealed in their management. The future of human society is intimately associated with the destinies of these vast enterprises which have inherited, along with physical success, the duty, or more correctly, the privilege of world guardianship. Even the continuance of the economic theory now demands the strengthening of ethical convictions. Prominence of any kind, whether bestowed by wealth or authority, carries with it priestly obligations. 
The leader, whatever be his field, is looked upon for intelligent guidance. His convictions inspire his followers. His words influence their lives. And his policies dominate their activities. There is every indication that the esoteric tradition will next function through that complex of vast interrelated organisms of production and distribution which now dominates human imagination. While this structure may appear to the superficial-minded as heartless and soulless, it is also the largest and most powerful potential instrument for the advancement of mankind ever yet devised. Education, science, and economics are today indivisible. They have already formed a partnership for their mutual advancement. Equipped with knowledge, skill, and the necessary physical resources, this huge combine awaits the destiny for which it was intended. There is no virtue in burdening the future with the conclusions of today. To prophesy is to restrict not the will of heaven, but the mind of man. Old principles, as they reveal more of themselves, will be given new names, and progress is always an adjustment of concepts, each of which is in a constant state of change. Assuming, however, that the term democracy, with its numerous imponderable overtones, conveys a conviction of natural unfoldment, it is reasonable to infer that the democratic motion will continue until all of its potentials have become potencies. Progress is not bound inevitably to any nation or people. Social and political structures are instruments for the advancement of the great work only to the degree that they keep the faith. If ambition or selfishness breaks the bond, the privilege of guardianship is forfeited. And this does not mean that the project fails. Rather, that which fails the project loses the privilege of leadership. The plan, then, passes to the keeping of other groups and other ages. Man cannot destroy or pervert the works of destiny. He can only divide himself from those works and by so doing cease to share in the essential vitality of progress. Thus it is that unreasonable doubts and fears concerning providence are philosophically unsound. Failure is always regrettable, but principles do not fail, and that which is foreordained perfects itself. Although empires may collapse, great teachers be martyred, schools and systems perish, and enlightened leaders remain unhonored, the substance of the great work remains unchanged and unchangeable. New vehicles appear even as the older ones are betrayed by human selfishness. The eternal commonwealth is an assignment of destiny and spiritual progress symbolized by the fabled phoenix rises victoriously from the ashes of the human ruin. The adept tradition has always available social instruments waiting to be ensouled with the larger vision. All things created by men are mortal and destructible. But the way destined by heaven is immortal and indestructible. Universal enlightenment and universal fraternity are the natural ends which reward the social struggle. The world and all that inhabits it are moving triumphantly toward peace and security. At any given time the vision may be obscured, but in the larger dimensions of time all things work together for the fulfillment of the greater good. Is that a piece of excellent retrospective writing looking back on history? No, ladies and gentlemen, it is not. For this was written by Manley P. Hall in Los Angeles, California, in April of 1951. What he predicted is what is happening. A wedding, a marriage between the corporate world and the state, which is coming. He's talking here about socialism. 
Under a democratic concept of living, the responsibilities for progress pass to the keeping of the people. The powers vested in the governing body functioning with the consent of the governed include not only provisions for collective security, but also the advancement of such religions, philosophies, arts, and science as contribute to the essential growth of human character. Humanism, the concept that man will become God, and the new religion will change with the needs of man, not man conforming to the laws of God. Democratic institutions must accept the task for which they were fashioned and become the conscious custodians of the democratic destiny, and so on and so forth. Manley P. Hall was an adept, a highly degreed in fact. He was a 33rd degree Freemason and may have held many, many other degrees in the secret societies of mystery Babylon. He was a priest of the order 